Welcome to At Home with Music, and this is the second video concerning the circle of fifths as we make our way into From Ears to Fingers, part two. So you'll notice we've already got all the letters here. Just kind of left these up from last time. And I wanted to show you another way that you could find the next note as you're building this circle. It's actually quite easy. I want you to think now of these not just as individual notes, but as chords. So if you think of this as an all major chords, by the way, for now, that's the C major chord. And if you play a C major chord, you know that you're going to be playing C, E, and G on the keyboard. And G is the top note of that three note chord. If you play the C major chord in root position, then the top note's going to be G. So there's G. Now, if you play the G major chord in root position, the three notes are going to be G, B, and D. So there's your next note. And if you play the D major chord in root position, meaning the root is the lowest note, then your three notes are going to be D, F sharp, and then A. So there's another way that you can find the notes as you're building the circle of fifths. You can also use a mnemonic to help you remember these notes. Now, I encourage you, make up one yourself. I've got one that's kind of silly. It's like... Let's see, I wrote it down. Carefully go down and eat bugs freely. <laughs> Carefully go down and eat bugs freely. That doesn't make any sense, but you could make up one for yourself. Just create a, some kind of silly sentence, and each word starts with a letter of the um, circle of fifths. And then you can do one going the other way. I've got to move my computer down a little bit here so I can see it. Carefully flee bees except at dawn. Now that's not actually a rule you can live by. If you come across a beehive and it's only dawn, you should still flee. <laughs> Especially if they're killer bees. Anyway, we can use these notes to represent not only just the separate notes, you know, C, G, D, and so on, but we can also use them to represent chords. Right? So this becomes C major, G major, D major, A major, and so on, and F major, B flat major, E flat major, and A flat major. And so what you can do when you recognize these as chords, all the major chords, you remember how we numbered the chords. You start with the C major scale, and, you, and I'll show you this on the keyboard in the second half of this video. C major, and then you go up to D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then back to C major. And so each of those, we give it a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can either represent it as Roman numerals, which I'm going to do here. We can also use the Nashville numbering system, which we also covered in a previous video. So C, if we're in the key of C major, C becomes... 1. And G is the 5. And F is the 4. So now you have the three basic chords in the key of C major, and you can see how they relate to one another. And so if you play C and then you go to G, the G chord, the 5 chord in C, we call that the dominant chord. It wants to go back to the one. It just feels like it needs to go back to the one. You think of one as home and the five as we've gone a few steps away from home and now we've decided I feel drawn to go back home and we go back to the one. The four chord is the subdominant in the key of C. F is F major in the key of C is the four chord. The four chord can go back to the C major chord directly and if you've ever sung a hymn and you get to the end and you sing, Amen, that's the Amen cadence, if you like. And that's going directly from F to C. You can also go F, G, C. And I'll demonstrate these on the keyboard as well. So I have found the subdominant, the dominant, and the tonic. So you can remember those three terms. Dominant, subdominant, tonic in the key of C. Now, 
I'm going to erase those. And here's where it gets really interesting. Well, it's already been pretty interesting so far, hasn't it? Let's say we move over here to the key of G. Now G becomes the one. We have the G major scale and so on. G becomes the one and so D becomes the dominant, the five chord. And C becomes the four chord. So now if you're in the key of G and you play a D, the D feels like it should go back to the G. Or if you play C in the key of G, you can either go right back to the G or you can go C, D, G. I hope you can see how that works. Now you can f go all the way through all the keys and figure this out. And this gets you familiar with that very simple progression. You remember we talked about chord progressions. Now you can see how it works in relationship to the circle of fifths. So I encourage you now, this is your homework if you like, to go through every key. So in A, let's see, we gotta erase this one here. I think you can see how this is going to work. It's not very difficult. A becomes one. And the next one up becomes five. And the next one back becomes four. Now we're in the key of A major. And we've got these three chords. I think I skipped over D. Let's try D real quick. Okay, in the key of D, D is the tonic. It's the main basic chord in the key of D. That's where, if you wrote a song in the key of D, that's where it would most likely start. A would be the five, and G would be the four. Anyway, I'm sure you can see how this is going to work as you go through all the different keys, all the different chords. Now, in the next video, I'm going to explain how this works in relationship to key signatures. You'll notice I didn't go backwards, so if we did F, when I erase these guys, we'll do one going this way. If F becomes the one, becomes the tonic, then C becomes the five, and B flat becomes the four. And so now you can play three chord progressions in the key of F. So what this is going to enable you to do is not only become very familiar with all the keys, you won't be stuck only playing in a few different keys like some piano players, you'll be able to play in any key. And you'll be able to figure out these basic chord progressions in any key. And I've always maintained that a good keyboard player should be able to play in every key. Now, are you going to be able to do this overnight? No, this is going to take a little bit of thought, a little bit of playing around with it, a little bit of trial and error. But I know that you can do it because it's actually all very logical it all fits together very nicely. So, so what we're going to be doing here is showing you another way to find the notes in the circle of fifths. And what you want to do at this point is think of the notes not just in terms of a single note, like C, G, and D, and so on, but thinking, them, thinking of them in terms of being chords, with each note representing the root of that chord. So C would represent C major. G would represent G major and so on. So this is another way that you can find the notes and the chords that are part of the circle of fifths. So if we start with C major, with C as the root, and then you'll notice that the top note is actually a fifth above C. These are all in root position, by the way. And so now you can take this, make it the root, and now you're in D major, excuse me, G major. G is the root. D is the fifth. Now D becomes the root of D major. A becomes the root of A major. I'll move down here. E becomes the root of E major. And notice we're moving up. This doesn't really work going down. You have to continually be ascending in order to make these chords work as they link together. And so B, F sharp, C sharp. Now you'll notice we are in the realm of flat keys as well. This could be called C sharp major, but it could also be D flat major. 
And then from D flat major, we go to A flat, E flat, B flat, and then to F. And then now we've gone all the way around the circle and we're back to C. Now, we talk a little bit about the dominant, subdominant, and the tonic in each of the keys that are represented in the circle of the fifths, which right now we're, we're basically dealing with major keys. And so we have 12 major keys, and each one of those major keys has a dominant chord, a subdominant chord, and the tonic. The tonic chord... If we play all the chords in the C major scale, you have the one. You remember we, we gave these chords numbers. One, two, which is minor. Three, also minor. Four is major. Five is major. Six is minor. Seven is diminished. The one chord is also called the tonic. This is home. The four chord is called the subdominant, and the five is called the dominant. And it's called the dominant because it tends to want to lead you back, back to the one. And so now you have, and you can play them this way, one, four, five, one. And then we move up to the key of G. Now G is the one chord. C is the four chord, or the subdominant. D, D major, is the dominant, which leads us back to one. So here it is in C. Notice I'm playing inversions to make it easier. And then here. And now in the key of D. D is the tonic, G is the subdominant, A is the dominant. Now I think you can see where I'd like you to go from here. You can see how we're just venturing out a little ways into the circle of fifths. Like let's say we're in the key of E, and then we move to the key or to the uh, chord A. And we come back to the dominant and back to the tonic. And so your task now is to do this in all 12 major keys. Now, we've done something similar to this in the past where we were playing chord progressions. And now what I want you to do here is to connect those progressions to how they look on the circle of fifths. And I think you'll find it quite interesting. So there's our next lesson in the circle of fifths. In the next video, we're going to cover how this relates to key signatures. And you'll see that this is an easy way for you to help memorize how many sharps and flats are in each key signature. There's, there's more than one way to do it, but the circle of fifths gives you another way. And I think you'll find that very interesting. So thanks for watching. Be sure to watch this video again if I've lost you along the way somewhere. If you have any questions about what we're talking about here, please feel free to, to ask those questions in the comments section, and I will be sure to get right back to you, because I don't want you to be confused about any of this. We're building a foundation of your music education. So, questions, comments, suggestions, all can go in the comments section. I respond to everything that I possibly can. And I encourage you to like, subscribe, and so forth, and tell other homeschool families about At Home With Music.